So what is fault tolerance? Fault means a failure or a problem and tolerance is the ability to tolerate it. So fault tolerance simply put is an ability to tolerate a failure or a problem. Let's take a simple example to understand about fault tolerance from the context of you seeing this video. There could be a problem that you face that you are not able to hear me clearly because of some background noise that you are having. How do you tolerate that? Well, you may either move into a room where you don't have any noise or simpler, you could just wear a headset or a earphone and you will hear me clearly. That's a very simple problem that we are trying to tolerate. Let's say you land up with a power failure. Assuming that you're not using a mobile phone, so in a mobile phone you have a battery, so you don't need power to be on. Assume you're on a desktop, then the power goes off. Then what do you do? Laptops were designed to be fault tolerant as far as power is concerned because of the need to be mobile. So they have a battery. So even if the power goes off, you still continue to be able to use your laptop. Let's say, Well, that was an example of how if your internet went off. So then, what do you do? You might have to have a backup internet. So that even if the primary internet fails, you ensure a backup internet comes into play. So that's the fault tolerance you're talking about that. Now what if I failed? Well, I could have another instructor, maybe myself, standing next and when I faint, he continues on. That is fault tolerant of the instructor. That's not necessary in a video scenario, but if you were in a class where there is an instructor like me standing in front of you and teaching and if he goes off, there could be another instructor who is just waiting to teach you. Now, the moment the primary instructor fails, the standby instructor comes up. Now, that's an example of fault tolerance of the instructor in a class. Similarly, in computer parlance, what is fault tolerance? The ability to tolerate any fault. It could be that you lose power and you still want your computer to run. Now, you could have a UPS if it's a house or a household environment. But what if it's at a data center? And at a data center, they typically have more than one power sources, maybe from two different power distribution companies. And they ensure there are two power lines running all across the data center. And every server would have two power sockets. So you have both the power lines plugged in. So in case there's a fault, the other power would be used. So the computer doesn't fail. When it comes to storage, what is fault tolerance? the ability to tolerate faults at storage. It could be that you could lose a hard disk, which is a pretty common occurrence, but you might want to tolerate bigger faults. Now, what you need to remember is the higher the level of fault you want to tolerate or the more the number of faults you want to tolerate, it's going to cost more money. For example, if you want to tolerate the fault of a disk, then you might want to mirror it across into another disk. So I have a disk here, whatever data is put in here, I mirror it across here. So in case this disk goes off, this disk is available and you will get the data. Now that's at a disk level. Now let's say you have a server, which is a storage array, and you put some data there. What if the storage array fails? You might have had mirroring within the disks, but the entire storage array fails, your data is unavailable. So you raise your fault tolerance from a disk level into a storage server level. Then what do you need to do? You need to have another storage server. Now instead of keeping mirroring at a disk level, you will keep mirroring at a storage server level. So whatever is happening in a storage server is mirrored onto another storage server. So now what happens, even if the entire storage server fails, you still have the data here. So the mirroring is happening at a storage server level and you have doubled your cost of storage server implementation. At a storage server level, you might have a network failure. So you might want to have two 
network cards in your storage server so that even if one of them fails you are able to uh, tolerate that and the connectivity from your storage server to your database server you might have two switches so that each of the network cables go into two different switches and the database server also has two HBA cards the network cards and from each of the switches you connect them to one one HBA card what is the point even if the switch fails you are fault tolerant so every time you are looking at fault tolerance we are looking at be able to tolerate a fault and make your server available in the context of storage ensure your data is available and this is the purpose of fault tolerance so with this video you understood the concept of fault tolerance and you have already understood about certain other terms like LUN, striping, mirroring, redundancy is a concept in ASM, we'll come to that. But mirroring is a concept in storage. So mirroring and redundancy are similar. I will talk about redundancy specifically when we get on to ASM. The idea behind the first set of videos that you might have seen is to ensure you understand some solid concepts of storage, then understanding ASM becomes easier.